Some of you will know that I recently took delivery of a brand new Nikon Z8, and most of you will know me for my landscape photography. But in this video, I'm going to share with you the experience of photographing one of the biggest rock bands in the world with the Nikon Z8. The chance to photograph Muse is hugely exciting, but an opportunity like this doesn't just magic itself into existence. I've actually been doing live music photography for well over a decade now. I just don't happen to talk about it very much on this channel. But to give you an idea of the types of photographs that I take and the musicians that I've been photographing, here is a short slideshow. Being able to photograph those concerts comes as a result of having a long-term trusted relationship with a publisher, a publisher that has good contacts and is able to negotiate these kind of pet parties. But the bigger the gig, the harder it is to get one of these photo parties. For example, the Muse gig, we've been negotiating that for probably a few months, but we actually only got confirmation that we had a pet pass less than 48 hours before the gig started. What a photo pass does is it gives you access to the pit. Now, if you don't know what the pit is, well, let me explain. In this photograph here, you can see Home Park, which is Plymouth Football Club's ground. This is where Muse were gonna be playing. Down to the bottom right is the pit entry area. Now, this is always fenced off. It's normally got a gate and it's always uh, controlled by security. You need your photo pass to get in that area. We were also escorted in as well. You walk along there and you come to the main pit area. This is a section in front of the stage where the photographers go and allows them to uh, take photographs of the act when they're on the main stage. That long thin bit that comes out the stage, that's called the thrust stage. And this is an area that you'll quite often see in bigger gigs these days where it allows the artist to move down out into the middle of the crowd. Let's take a closer look at the pit for this gig. As you can see, compared to the main stage and the thrust stage, the area is actually relatively small. I've marked the boundaries here with these two arrows. Now we were told by security, very politely I might add, that we were not allowed to breach those lines under no circumstances. If you did, that was it, pet pass revoked, and out you go, no second warning. So we really had to watch what we were doing when we were moving about the pet area to get those photographs. It wasn't just the limits on our movement that represented challenges for photographing from this particular pit. Other things included the stage height. It was actually quite a high stage and the artists weren't close enough to the edge of the stage for us to typically get a full length body shot. So that was quite tricky when it came to composition. Other things to consider were fellow photographers. Now, quite a small pit area, quite a large number of photographers. So you had to be quite careful and more importantly, consider it to your fellow photographers. You don't want to be walking into people's shots or even worse, worse not really having spatial awareness and walking into people. So you had to kind of uh, be a little bit careful there. And also right in front of us in the pit area was a cameraman. Now he was, his job was to film Muse and that video footage will go up in the big screens either side of the stage. So he had a very important job. So you could be lining up a shot and then the camera would swing by. So you just had to kind of be aware about where he was. So there were a few challenges to shooting from this pit, but nothing that made the photography impossible. But 
Whatever I was doing, I would have to do it in the standard three song limit. Let's talk about gear. Like I said, using the Nikon Z8. Now this is a pure luck than anything else. The camera just happened to arrive 24 hours before the gig. Lens choice, a bit more limited there. So I have to use my F4 lenses because they're the only ones I currently own. So that's a 14 to 30 and a 24 to 120. Now for a gig like this, what I'd normally do is rent a lens, more almost certainly the 70 to 200 to 8. But unfortunately I didn't get the photo pass until less than 40 hours before the gig. So there wasn't time to rent a lens. So 14 to 30 for the crowd shots, 24 to 120 for everything else. Camera setup, uh, frames per second. So I put it on the low burst rate, but I set it at 10 frames per second. I thought that 20 would be too much, even though the Nikon Z8 is capable of that. Set it on automatic focus, continuous, uh, large area and people detection. I thought that'll give me the best chance of getting the faces and the eyes sharp. And one final thing that I set, I set the custom control ring on the 24 to 120 to be ISO control because I shoot manual, set my shutter speed, set my aperture, and then once I want to adjust the exposure, I can just turn the control ring on the lens and I can quickly change the ISO rather than having to hold the ISO button and then use the control wheel at the back. Right, before I tell you how I got on with the Z8 Photograph and Muse, here are some of the photographs that I captured. How did I do? Ah, oh, I think I did okay. The main thing is my editor's happy. He's got some photographs that go along with his article. So that's always the most important thing. Now, if it had a bit more pet access, a bit wider access, maybe in access down the thrust stage and the 70 to 200, yes, I probably could have got some better shots. But on the whole, I think I captured some good photographs that showed the character of the gig. So how did the Nikon Z8 perform? Well, very well. Now, I'm not going to call this a full review because I only got the camera 24 hours before the start of the gig. And apart from switching on, setting up the menu options, the first frame I took with the Nikon Z8 was when I was in the pit ready to shoot Muse. So I had real no preparation time for it. But the autofocus system, I have to say, is day and night compared to the Z7. I just left it on autofocus mode, detecting faces and eyes, and it just did the job that I wanted it to do. I detected faces, eyes, I can move between the faces and different people's eyes. And it just gave you so much confidence that you didn't have to, have to really worry about the autofocus system. It was taking care of itself. So that really only left me to, to deal with composition and lighting. And lighting was a lot easier as well because I got that control ring on that 24 to 120. And because I said it set the manual aperture and manual shutter speed, in order to adjust the exposure, all I have to do is turn the control ring on the lens to adjust the ISO. So the overall shooting experience compared to other cameras that I've had is vastly superior. So how did I end up taking over a thousand photographs in less than 10 minutes? Well, as it turns out, quite easily. So even with the camera set at 10 frames a second, it's very, very easy to do a long burst. Now, Unlike my previous cameras, which have had mechanical shutters, that's Z7, D850, D750, for example, this camera has no moving parts. So when you press the shutter, there's no sound and there's no physical vibration or physical feedback to let you know you're taking a picture. The only way you know you're taking a picture is when you look through the EVF, if there's some lines around uh, the edges of that EVF that flash up to let you know. So it's actually quite easy to get distracted or not really know that you're taking pictures or as many pictures as you think you're taking 
just because you're holding down the shutter button. So for that reason, that's why I ended up taking loads of pictures. And that is something that I <laughs> certainly don't recommend. Now, I'm not complaining that there's no moving parts or there's no physical feedback. I guess it's just something that I'm going to need to get used to. And the next time I go out with a camera uh, to do such things as live music photography, I just need to be a bit more aware of how long I'm pressing the button down for. Other factors included, I was pretty excited about shooting Muse, obviously, and obviously there's a little bit of pressure about making sure I get the shot. So that's probably why my little shutter finger there was a little bit heavy on the shutter button. I would never normally recommend taking a thousand frames in such a short space of time, and it will be something I'll avoid next time I'm out with this camera shooting live music. Honestly, I'm just glad I wasn't on 20 frames per second. That would have had a whole different mess to deal with there. Now, you may be asking, did I fill the buffer? Yes, I did, but I will say that I had the memory cards configured for backup. So every time I took a shot, it was writing to the CF Express Type B card that I've got, a very fast one, and my SD card. Now the SD card is quite a bit slower, so it probably wasn't so much the buffer filling up, it was the fact that it couldn't write all those images to the SD card quick enough. So next time I head out with a camera to do some live music photography, I'm gonna make a couple of changes. First of all, I'm obviously not gonna mash that shutter, shutter button as much, don't need to take that many pictures again. And the other thing is I'm probably gonna re-enable AF on on the shutter button. So from all years and I care to remember, I've always used back button focusing. Now this has worked very well for me, for landscapes and for live music photography and all my cameras, Z7, D850, D750, for example. But I think the AF technology has moved on so much now, it's so accurate, it's so fast, that actually me using the back button focusing or the AF on button in the back, as well as trying to press the shutter bead, shutter button, I can't really keep up with the action. It's much easier for me if I just put it on AFC with the AF on button on the shutter and I half press that down, that way I know the camera's always working, always locking on to uh, its eye or its face. And if I press the shutter button down, it's almost guaranteed that it's gonna be in focus. And it's gonna do that much quicker than I can do by using two buttons. Other things I'll do as well, I'll probably try and limit the AF uh, size as well. Currently for that gig, I had it on the full sensor width. I'm going to start using some of those smaller boxes and those custom size boxes as well, just to give the camera, uh, make it a little bit easier on the camera for when it comes to finding eyes and faces. And also I'll probably give the 3D tracking a go as well. So really that AF system has really kind of changed the way I would set the camera up to taking live music photography. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that video, me sharing my experience of photographing news with a Z8. I was really just very fortunate, very lucky that the camera arrived when it did. I mean, I'm sure I could have got good pictures with the Nikon Z7, but it was just made a whole lot easier with the Nikon Z8. Now, I didn't buy the Nikon Z8 for live music photography. I don't do as much of that type of photography as I once used to. I really did actually buy this camera for doing landscape photography and to help me with my uh, video and my YouTube content creation. But just knowing that that camera's in my bag and next time I get the call up, to do a big concert shoot like this, it's great to know that that's there and it's got all that capability. But if you did enjoy this video, remember to give the video a like, uh, do share it as well. It really helps the channel if you tell more people about uh, my videos. I really would appreciate it. And you know, if you want to leave me a comment, please do so. I do try and read and reply to everyone's comments. And of course, if you've got an extra few minutes, I'm popping up some videos and some playlists in the corner of the screen as well. So why not take the time to check those out as well. But until the next video, I'll see you then.